Most schizophrenics don't live in hospitals or on the streets. They live with their families. Bob is 35 years old and has been sick for 17 years. He's lived at home with his parents in West Virginia for most of that time. Bob's been diagnosed an acute schizophrenic, needing intensive care. One out of every 100 people in the United States will be diagnosed with schizophrenia during their lifetime. It can strike anyone. Uh, Phil Grillo made me a steak dinner once, but they didn't do anything to him. Schizophrenia does not mean Bob has multiple personalities. He has a physical disease of the brain. Nice day out, huh? Yeah, beautiful. Spring is going to be here pretty soon. Yeah. You like being outside? Uh-huh. Beautiful day. Think we'll get a little snow? So, Bob, this, mm -hmm. this is your room, mm -hmm. huh? Can you tell me about some of the things you have in the room? Chair is from um, the uh, St. Elizabeth Union Mission and from the Spencer Mental State Hospital where I rocked for six months, two years and six months, respectively. Uh, this is a new bike. Dad tried to sway my uh, eyes when I was depressed. Tried to put a bike in here so we could get some life, you know. And uh, this is a radio cigarette case and the holder in um, ashtray, and this is a TV. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me about the trophies? Are those things you've won? I uh, was an excellent bowler and a Latin scholar in high school and college. This uh, I got from Nelson Burton Jr., an average of 195 in bowling. This was from the Forensic League. Um, seal of approval. Bob was once the captain of his high school's debating team. He now experiences extreme thought disorder and talks in a disconnected jumble of words. I know how to angle myself with the rest of the men, do you see? That's why I did that to Sue. That's why I did that to Aunt Ethel, you know. And uh, I want Fritz and all of them to know, the prey mantis and the spider and the grasshopper, to know that... Uh, I think it's very important that we act badly, but I think it's very important that we act uh, uh, in reality of what makes the world go round. You know, you're liable to go sliding off the curb into your death uh, on a man that can't control himself. So really, the end this wins, uh, whether it's no or yes. So um, I think bulk sometimes wins. In some of the cases, you know, the very agile cases, the bulk wins. But I think the most important thing uh, the, uh, the devil can do is to court, is to, uh, self-sacrifice and coordinate the Kmart walk so pleasure can be evened out. And, in, in fact, I've, I've really swayed my charms towards, um, going forward into straighthood. But, uh, I think, uh, every doctor knows if there's no such thing to believe in straighthood and to go ahead forward. Uh, into kidney stones and stuff like that, you know, Dad, uh, Dad's a son of a bitch. <laughs> but, um... Bob, do you know how long it's, you've been sick? About, uh, a year. Just recently? No, it's been about a year and two months. Bob doesn't realize he's been sick for 17 years. Could you give us a, a little bit of a description of what Bob was like as he was growing up? Yes, uh, Bob was a very serious person from the first day he was born. We thought surely he was happy. He had just about everything. We spent a lot of time with him, and we loved him very much. This was our first child, and we had uh, uh, a lot of hopes and expectations of Bob, because he was a very smart fella, and his coordination was great in sports. He, he liked government uh, affairs, he liked politics and the like. Uh, as I say, he excelled in math. He had four years of math in high school. He accepted the responsibilities of his homework on his own and did a bang-up job. He was an all-American boy. 
on the advice of a, a private psychiatrist. He said that he felt like he needed... In the beginning of Bob's illness, doctors advised his parents to commit their son to a state institution. Bob's mother talks about why she decided instead to take care of Bob at home. He was in that state hospital for six months. And uh, it was... Uh, it was just terrible to see uh, what happened to him. And when I saw him, I couldn't believe that this could happen to this, this kid that had been such a great kid. He, he was skin, he was so thin, he could hardly keep his shoes on. He shuffled, he could hardly walk. And he was just so drugged. Um, he just had to take him by his hand, you know, and lead him. And he was that at all. Like a little puppy or something. It was terrible. And I said to Cappy, I'll see this child dead before I'll ever let anybody do anything like this to him again. And we brought him home. You won't have to have a second piece. Bob, would you, do you want to return thanks for us this evening? Okay. Aren't you precious, London damn man? We pray that you will please forgive the sins of the states and take us to the Sylvania dinner. We pray that you will bless our loved ones for hearing and seeing and smelling purposes. We pray that you will also let us go east and we ask these things and Christ, uh, the Messiah's name, and for his sake, amen. Okay. After dinner, Bob's mother, Frankie, talked about her son's childhood and how he first got sick. It is. Bob's was a typical case. Schizophrenia struck him at age 18, during his first year of college. And it came on suddenly. It was, uh, uh, it, he was in college, and we really, uh, didn't recognize it. He came home at Thanksgiving, his first semester in college, and he was nervous, but we figured, you know, it's just college. And uh, then when he came home at Christmas, he was kind of pacing and walking the floor, and we still didn't recognize anything, just thought he was eager to get back to school. And by mid-semester exams in um, January, he, he was calling home uh, two and three times a week a little before that and then he got to where he was calling home uh, two or three times a day and then four and five times a day and then in the middle of the night he'd call and talk an hour always to be reassured reassured and we could not understand this we just didn't know what was happening and finally on Thursday before his final exam started on the following Monday he called and he said mom mom my mind is going. I'm losing my mind. Are there some things you'd like to do? Yeah. What would you like to do? Most of anything. I'd like to... I was going to say screw them. <laughs> no. um, be with the cowardly lion. And the following September, he was hospitalized for the first time. In a he was in a private hospital, and he was in there for about five weeks. And that's when they started giving him Haldol. And then we uh, saw the reports at the plant where my husband works, and that's when we found out what he had was through the insurance papers. And on there, it said acute schizophrenia. And we, we didn't even know what schizophrenia was. Well, of course, now we know it is a disease, but back in those days, we didn't know this. And uh, that's very hard on the parents when they learn, uh, when you have a doctor telling you because of something you did that that child is ill, and it's not true. Is, uh... Scientists and doctors do not know what causes schizophrenia. Is an encephalogram. There are several theories for the onset of the illness. Schizophrenia often runs in families, and it may be inherited genetically. Yet, as in Bob's case, 
there is no history of mental illness on either side of the family. Uh, I think those bats and the witch and Cliff were um, really my father, but the Tin Man wouldn't let me date my father. Too big, you know. Some scientists really believe count. in biochemical theories, that there is something wrong in the metabolism of the brain. So, uh, I think the monkeys and the men are mixed. Some doctors believe that viruses attack the brain, possibly during the pregnancy. Abnormalities in a person's immune system, developmental theories of early brain damage, even stress theories in which a person goes mad because he cannot cope with the pressures of his life. But all of these are just theories. Schizophrenia is not curable because no one really understands what causes the illness. I think we need to fly over the Atlantic Ocean. That's what we need, yeah. You feel more like doing something? Oh, yeah. Medicine? Yeah. Bob's father, Cappy, decided to retire early to devote more time to his son's care. But uh, I think uh, as time goes on, it's smart to lay off medicine. You don't like to take the pills? You think you could ever get much better if you don't take medicine? It just depends on how I could hit the, the golf ball. One of Bob's symptoms is the need to walk to release his excess energy. Bob once walked out the door of his home in West Virginia and was found by the police several days later. He had walked all the way to New Jersey. And so every day, three times a day, Cappy drives his son to a shopping mall. The Kmart is Bob's favorite place to go. Just walking, or are you? You know, I, I just, I just love to shop. Don't let us hold you up. <laughs> As Bob walks, he constantly hears imaginary voices. Perhaps the most dramatic symptom of schizophrenia. He hears these voices as clearly as he hears the voices of real people talking to him. Are you going to still stay around here? Want some hot chocolate? Bob Cad controllers stop these voices, which always torment and criticize him. So how are you feeling, Bob? I just had to claim life. <laughs> what the? Had to claim life. Claim life? Yeah. What do you mean by that? You said there was that I have never been a man in my life, therefore I have to oh, claim no, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I wouldn't say that. Okay. You'll be a man. You'll be a man someday. Bob is one of the 40% of schizophrenics that don't respond to any drug treatment. He's been given Thorazine, Stelazine, Haldol, Moban, Loxetane, Prolixin, Melaril, and Navane. But none of these antipsychotic drugs have made Bob any better. Oh, he tells me to buy drugs, didn't he? Bob is about to start taking an experimental new drug called clozapine. It's considered a last hope medication for schizophrenics who have failed to improve on all other drugs. But there is some risk in taking clozapine. The medication can, in some cases, have dangerous and even fatal side effects. We want it to work so badly, but yet you always have to remember it may not help Bob, it may not help Bob, or he might develop the side effect and not be able to take the medication. If he can just be happy and have, uh, have a, an attitude of just wanting to do something or wanting to go to school or or even being able to watch television or 
uh, just be better than he is, you know. This is just a wasted life. It's not only wasting his life, it's wasting ours. It's... I, I don't know. I just have a feeling about this one thing that it's going to help. It's got to help. We can't imagine waking up in the morning and uh, <laughs> not having this sick kid. I just can't imagine what it would be like. So we are really looking forward to it. It's hope. It's a lot of hope. And Bob didn't get better. His thinking started to improve, but he had a bad reaction to clozapine and had to stop taking it. Bob lost his balance and coordination and today cannot stand up or walk. After struggling with the illness for 17 years, Bob's mother and father finally decided to commit their son to a small group home where Bob will receive the intensive care he needs.